The center of the world's work for the entire Earth is right here in Seattle, and we've got the guy who's going to tell us all about it. Mark Howard, the Senior International Program Manager for Earth Corps. Tonight on Public Exposure, I'm Stan Emmert. Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks, Stan. So, you've got a big job, don't you? Uh, yeah, it gets pretty big at times. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I want everyone to know that uh, in addition to being with Earth Corps, uh, Mark comes to us through the assistance of the World Affairs Council. Please go to their website, world-affairs.org. Mark. As, what do you basically do as the Senior International Program Manager for Earth Corps? Well, Stan, I, I work with an uh, international network of over 400 uh, environmental organizations that uh, have a need to build their capacity in environmental restoration. And the way they do that, instead of your typical form of international development, they create an opportunity for their junior staff to actually come here to Seattle, Washington to uh, learn skills in leadership, volunteer management and environmental restoration so that they can return home and implement uh, environmental restoration uh, projects in their countries. And you got a pretty good history in this kind of work yourself though. I mean you were a Peace Corps person. Correct. Uh, in uh, 2001 I uh, you know I have, to, I have to preface all this in saying that I was born and raised in Omaha, Nebraska and no offense to some of your viewers but it's not necessarily the mecca of cultural diversity. <laughs> Uh, and uh, after uh, doing my undergraduate work and working there for a number of years in the Midwest, I decided to plug my nose and jump outside of the fishbowl and I joined Peace Corps. And wow, that's a big step. It was a big step. It was a big step, Stan. And uh, if you know anything about Peace Corps, uh, you get regional preferences, but you don't necessarily get to pick the country that you go to. Mm -hmm. And by the time uh, my packet finally arrived, nine months after my application process, it said, congratulations, Mark, you're going to the Philippines. And I said, that's fantastic. I'm so excited. Where's the Philippines? <laughs> so I quickly ran to the map. Um, and in the next couple of months, as I was preparing for my departure, I uh, started to learn uh, to speak uh, Tagalog, or at least I counted, learned how to count one to ten. Uh, and once I was placed in country, I had the benefit of actually being placed with an organization called the Palawan Conservation Corps. Yeah, we actually um, have their logo and a picture from there. So the Palawan Conservation Corps uh, is a conservation corps at the Hard Hearts. It's uh, founded in 1999 by actually a consortium of Filipinos and Peace Corps volunteers. And the idea is the organization set up for out of school youth. So these are youth uh, that can't afford to go to the free public education system. So what I mean by that is... Yeah, I was going to ask, well, what do you mean by that? Well, they can't afford either the public transportation, uh, the, the school lunches, or uh, uh, the uniforms. Yeah, you have to wear uniforms mm -hmm. in public school in the Philippines. Uh, and they're seen as a high-risk population for environmentally detrimental livelihoods. So what does that mean? Well, basically what that means is they don't have any other alternatives to make an income for themselves and their family. So more often than not, the out-of-school youth in the Philippines are prone to inner livelihoods such as dynamite fishing or illegal animal poaching. Dynamite or, fishing, it, it's exactly what it sounds like? Exactly what it sounds like. Exactly what it sounds like, Stan. Um, these, these livelihoods are obviously dangerous to the Filipino youth, but also mm -hmm. to the environment. So the Plowman Conservation Corps was formed in 1999 with an idea that they were going to create an avenue for out-of-school youth to become competitive with their peers so that they could enter the workforce with more uh, uh, in-tune livelihoods in terms of the environment. So it's a residential program, and it's up to nine months in length. And during that time, they get their GED equivalency, Mm -hmm. uh, they learn new livelihood skills in uh, organic farming, carpentry, or animal husbandry. And also during that program, they move around to different parts in, uh, in this particular case, the island of Palawan, doing restoration projects. What is that? So basically what they do is, uh, for example, if there's a watershed and it's been deforested, they'll actually go and restore the forest in the area. So they'll install erosion control fabric, they'll plant native trees, and basically help restore that watershed back to life. Now the interesting connection, Stan, is actually uh, at, at some point during my Peace Corps service, I said, you know, this is wonderful, this is such a great project, but how did you guys learn how to do all of this? 
And it turns out that all of my Filipino counterparts are actually graduates of this program called Earth Corps. So that's what it was. That's exactly what it Can was. Can we go back to the picture? Because I, I found something interesting when I was doing the research for the show. I found this quote, the youth is the hope of our native land by Dr. Jose Rizal. Mm -hmm. And I saw that and I thought, I know that name because I drive across the bridge all the time right here in <laughs> Seattle. So what's the connection between Dr. Rizal and uh, the Philippines and Seattle? Well, Dr. Jose Rizal is a, the national hero of the Philippines, uh, Dr. Jose Rizal and Manny Pacquiao at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. But as you can imagine, uh, because of the location of Seattle, Washington, there's actually a massive Filipino population in Seattle. Uh, in addition to the bridge that you cross every day, there's mm -hmm. actually also a park uh, named after Dr. Jose Rizal as well. Um, and as the Filipino population in Seattle grew, you can imagine that they had uh, made a, a lot of contributions to the area and uh, uh, had the opportunity to name, I'm sure, a number of, uh, a number of things for him. A number of things for him. Okay, so you're in the Peace Corps, you learn about Earth Corps, and you say, hey, Earth Corps is where I want to go. Let's talk a little bit about Earth Corps. The website sure. is earthcorps.org, by the way, and uh, just the basic program for those who work there, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. It's a one-year program, Correct. age 18 to 25, um, and it's pretty much physically demanding work outside. Exactly, outside. exactly. Well, actually, it sounds like tremendous fun. I wish I were 18 to 25. So. Well, <laughs> well, Stan, uh, you know, there's actually still ways for you to get involved outside of just being 18 to 25 and being a participant okay. in the program. Okay, tell me how. Um, Every weekend, Earth Corps has volunteer events all over Western Washington, all over the Puget Sound for volunteers just like yourself, anywhere from uh, ages 8 to 80 years old. We have opportunities for community members to come out and serve in their public open spaces by joining Earth Corps and helping restore uh, public lands by either planting trees, removing invasive plants like uh, English ivy or holly, uh, and uh, in some cases, uh, uh, building hiking trails or restoring streams. Now, is Earth Corps a federal program, a state program, or what? Well, Earth Corps is a 501c nonprofit based here in Seattle, Washington. Oh, so it's just a nonprofit. Well, so not just well, a Well, you know what I mean. Sure. It's, it's not a government program. But uh, we, are, we are a 501c3, so, mm -hmm. but we do partner often with federal agencies. So uh, our, program, uh, our program participants are actually made up of AmeriCorps volunteers. AmeriCorps, as mm -hmm. you probably know, Stan is a federal program, yeah. and our international participants. So in the program, they come together and actually uh, restore public open spaces. In addition to that, uh, they lead and manage over 10,000 community volunteers a year in environmental service. Really? Wow, that's, that's an awful lot. Actually, let's, let's do go to the next uh, couple of slides because they're, they're about the local programs. Now, you yourself, you don't work a whole lot with the local programs. No, no, uh, Stan, I don't. Uh, do you? But, but it looks like there's <clears throat> programs all over the Puget Sound. There is. Okay, what you work with mostly are something that you created, externs. What's an extern? Well, let me back up and tell you just a little bit more about the program. Okay. Uh, Earth Corps, the, the real idea of Earth Corps, our mission is to build global community through local environmental service. So the idea here, Stan, is that you and I don't need to necessarily speak the same language. You and I don't necessarily need to come from the same area or the same country to uh, go out and build, uh, uh, to go out and restore public open space. Mm -hmm. So together we can create uh, public value without having to share the same language or same culture and that naturally builds global community. So the idea of Earth Corps is because we have such a diverse audience, such an, uh, an audience that speaks English as a second or third language, the best way for us all to learn together is by actually going out there and doing it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so Earth Corps just doesn't sit around and talk about the environment. We actually go out and do it. Wow, that's fantastic. We're going to take a very short break. We're very fortunate to have with us Mark Howard, who is the Senior, Senior International Program Manager for Earth Corps. Their website is earthcorps.org. Strongly encourage you to go to that website, learn more about how you yourself can get involved environmentally, how you can help uh, restore habitat, how you can actually become a positive force just in a, in a weekend or just uh, at, on some volunteer time right here in the world yourself. Um, so is it time to talk about externs? I just think it's a cool word. So. It is. <laughs> <laughs> well, the idea of externs really came uh, in 2005, up until 2005, Earth Corps was primarily focused on our internal programs. And by that, I mean this traditional program of bringing 
international emerging environmental leaders together with their U.S. American peers mm -hmm. um, where they go out and create, uh, uh, restore public open space here in the Puget Sound. Well, what we started to re really quickly realize is that there's environmental organizations all over the nation that would love to bring a global perspective to their programs. And in 2005, Earth Corps actually went through a very lengthy process to be designated as a J-1 trainee program by the U.S. Department of State. And what does that mean? Well, basically what that means, Stan, is that we're able to sponsor the visas for uh, foreign nationals to come to the United States and participate in work-based training programs. So, for example, at Earth Corps, like I said before, we don't just talk about the environment, we actually go out and do it. And what mm -hmm. the J-1 visa allows us to do is bring our international participants in so that they can do that. It allows us to maintain our diversity, but what it also allows us to do is help other organizations, other environmental organizations around the Puget Sound, but also around the nation, bring in international environmental leaders into the program. It helps them build a global perspective, but at the same time it helps that international environmental leader build their own global perspective. Wow, so how many countries, uh, different countries have you worked with? At this point, we've worked with over 76 different countries. And how many languages do you speak? I speak two. I you speak, speak two. I <laughs> but so, so you, when you were talking before about you don't have to speak the same language to be able to work in a project together, you really mean that. Exactly. Exactly. Hmm. Well, uh, very, uh, very interesting. Also, something that you do work with uh, at a, our Earth Corps is the World Affairs Council and their International uh, Visitors and Leadership Program. It's a yeah, IVLP program. It's fantastic. Been working with them for a number of years. And really what the IVLP program does is they bring in delegations from all over the world where uh, folks are coming in from Haiti or uh, Serbia, Ireland, uh, Afghanistan, uh, where they're coming in and they're actually touring around the nation to different World Affairs Councils. Uh, but when they come here to Seattle, I like to say that's when we break them out of the norm because I think in a lot of cases, Stan, they get to sit here and talk. Well, you know, it kind of goes back to that <laughs> adage. We don't talk about the environment. We go out and do it. And in a lot of cases, the delegations have a ton of fun with Earth Corps because you know what we do, Stan? We get them out and we get them dirty. <laughs> What's your involvement with the uh, Secretary of State, uh, or excuse me, the Department of State's um, uh, itself and how does, I mean, you work with them with the J-1 program. Correct. Um, after that, I mean, how do they stay involved or do they? Well, uh, the, the designation is really through the Department of State. So Earth Corps uh, uh, maintains a program within federal regulations that are governed by uh, the Department of State. Uh, and we've had that designation since 2005. Mm -hmm. And that's been, you created the extern uh, program, and so I guess you've been intimately involved with the, in the J-1 program then here. Exactly. I led, actually, Earth Corps through the process for it to become, in our knowledge, one of the first conservation corps in the, in the nation to be designated as a J-1 wow. trainee Wow, congratulations. Program. Now, Thank you. let's talk about some of the alumni and international projects, mm -hmm. some things that you're likely to have dealt with directly. Actually, let's kind of go to them. I mean, there's Guatemala, and there's Brazil, and there's Ecuador. And there's this one here at the bottom. The great uh, Baikal, is that it's it said? Baikal. Baik Baikal Trail in Russia. Let's kind of go to the next click uh, because uh, here it is. Man, it's a, it's, a beautiful, it's a beautiful lake and let's go to the description about it. Uh, 25 million years old and the deepest lake in the world and 20% of the world's total unfrozen freshwater reserve. Before we go to the next picture, um, did you help pick the people who were going to be going there? Well, in, in, in the case of Great Baikal Trail Association, Earth Corps has had a partnership with them since 1997. So that actually oh. predates my arrival to Earth Corps in 2003. But I'm happy to say that partnership is alive and well. Okay, alive and well, and let's keep that in our thoughts. Let's go to this next picture because I thought it was kind of scary. Young people with <laughs> chainsaws. When I was a young person, I had a chainsaw. I was very dangerous. But, but that's the kind of stuff you get to do as an Earth Corps volunteer, maybe? Well, uh, it, after, after a lot of safety training, yes, you do get to operate the chainsaw stand. Uh, for a number of years... I want to go. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, you can go. There's actually opportunities every summer to go to Irkutsk, Russia, where is actually on the southern tip of Lake Baikal, mm -hmm. and you can work with our partner organization, the Great Baikal Trail Association, to help build hiking trail to eventually circumnavigate Lake Baikal. No kidding. Well, let me tell you the importance of it, Stan. Um, for a number of years, uh, the, the, the shore on Lake Baikal has been under a lot of pressure to become privatized. And with that privatization, 
comes uh, livelihoods that might be detrimental to Lake Baikal, uh, one fifth of the world's unfrozen fresh water, yeah. mind you. So there was paper mills being developed and whatnot and dumping the refuse into one fifth of the world's fresh water. There was a lot of concern because a lot of communities depend on Lake Baikal for their for their livelihoods. And what the whole idea behind the Great Baikal Trail Association was to band people together through public service of trail construction. And so every year they go out, they build hiking trail. And what that does is it brings international volunteers, not just from the United States, but all over the world, South Africa, South Korea, all over Europe. They go out and that naturally builds interest in the local communities to come out mm -hmm. and volunteers because they want to volunteer with the international volunteers as well. And so it builds a lot of global community around that. But not only does it do that, it brings a lot of public exposure to the area. And, and the importance of that is a number of years ago, there was an initiative to build an oil pipeline very close to the shore of Lake Baikal. Uh -huh. But at that point, okay. there was a number of, uh, there were so many initiatives, there was so much public interest in these environmental activities, this trail construction going on, that they were organized enough to put pressure to move that pipeline a lot further north than it would have been. So in other words, it's not impacting Lake Baikal in the way that it would have if they hadn't been so organized just by building trail. You know, this is such an interesting story because I never would have thought about that uh, out of Russia or the Russian people. Um, and so I'm pleasantly surprised here. I mean, is, is this a, has this been a willing partnership or has this been something that has moved along very slowly or how, how has it evolved? Well, it's been really interesting. You know, as I said before, Earth Corps leads and manages over 10,000 community volunteers. And mm -hmm. when you're working in the Puget Sound and, and you're talking about restoring public open space, well, it's something that most of us here in, in Seattle, Washington and Western Washington and Washington State in general, uh, hold near and dear to our hearts. Yeah, and absolutely. so really to get a lot of people to come out and volunteer here in Western Washington, we need uh, warm coffee and <laughs> bagels. Uh, but in, in Russia, it might take something different. And actually what really drove a lot of the Russian volunteerism was the international volunteer aspect. It's really interesting to see how our international alumni take this volunteer management and turn it into something that's really culturally appropriate for their company or for their country. So mm -hmm. another example would be our partner partnership in uh, in Kenya around Kisumu, around Lake Victoria, which is mm -hmm. actually the second largest fresh largest freshwater lake in the world, uh, which is actually being. Uh, attacked by water hyacinth. It's an invasive plant from uh, South America, Brazil to be precise. Hmm. And our Kenyan partners are actually working with volunteers there to remove water hyacinth. Well, warm coffee and bagels doesn't necessarily work in Kisumu, Kenya to drive that volunteer initiative. But what they've been able to do is actually provide an economic incentive around it. So what they're doing is they're actually taking this water hyacinth and converting it into paper uh, and, and usable goods uh, uh, from a number of things where people are using it on a daily basis, not just arts and crafts. So, so taking the bad, the bad plant and making something good out of it. But, and and ex that's exactly right, Stan, and that's really what's driving the volunteer initiative there. But no matter where, whether it's in Russia or Kenya, it's really Earth Corps' international volunteers that are going back to their home countries. It's them going back to their home countries where they have the ownership and them turning this idea, this perspective into something that's really culturally appropriate for where they live. Hmm. We're going to take another short break. Fascinating guest right here on Public Exposure, Mark Howard, the Senior International Program Manager for Earth Corps. Um, Mark is one of uh, the very fortunate and also we kind of envy him because he gets to work around the world in helping make the planet better. If you have uh, questions, go to earthcore.org. Earthcore.org, you're going to learn an awful lot, and maybe you want to volunteer about making our, our planet at home right here better, too. Um, let's go back to some other international projects, uh, like in Japan, the Japan Conservation Corps, um, especially in light of what's just happened in Japan. Man, I mean, they have a, a ton of work to do there, but they already, to a certain extent, were organized. They were. Uh, we have an alum uh, from Earth Corps. Uh, that again predates me. He uh, graduated Earth Corps back in 1997. Uh, and uh, Tatsuya went home to Japan with this idea that he wanted to create the Japan Conservation Corps. And it took a number of years of careful planning, 
Uh, and uh, Was it more difficult in Japan than it would have been in the United States for some reason? Well, it was different, and I think the main reason it was is because what Tatsuya had to do is find a way to make it culturally appropriate. So instead of sending people like me from Earth Corps to Japan telling everybody this is how you develop a conservation court, that wouldn't have worked then. Hmm. It was really Tatsuya's initiative to develop something that Japan's never seen before, a conservation court. And it's very interesting after the tragic events that just happened in, mm -hmm. in Japan, we got a great email just recently from Tatsuya about how the Japan Conservation Corps is helping in the cleanup initiative uh, uh -huh. and, and helping restore not only the environment, but helping their former uh, or their, their country mates restore their homeland. Hmm. Let's go back to, uh, back to the graphics because uh, there's a Mexican work camp. Uh, and then there's, there's also the, the uh, Palawan. Mm -hmm. uh, conservation Corps that you talked about and the the picture is participants built a nursery to cultivate trees and established an educational nature park. Now I thought that the Philippines was tropical and you wouldn't have any problem at all growing trees. <laughs> Why would you have to cultivate tree growth there? Well Stan, the, you're right it is tropical and uh, I, could re I have fond, remember, fond memories of just being able to stick something in the ground and boom it would actually sprout within a couple <laughs> weeks. Uh, the problem was is during my time as a Peace Corps volunteer, uh, the local equivalent of the Department of Natural Resources was promoting the planting of non-native flora. And by that, I mean things like honey locust or eucalyptus, things that aren't native to Palawan or the Philippines in general. And they had huge consequences for the local environment. Things like eucalyptus are very thirsty plants and they would just suck up the moisture that a lot of native flora needed. And uh, what Plowman Conservation Corps did in this particular case is they built one of the area's first native tree nurseries where they were cultivating hardwood uh, native trees so that they could then later go and plant those native trees because that was the appropriate flora that was right for Palawan. Now, was this in conjunction with uh, a private company like Weyerhaeuser or was this on their own? This was actually on their own. Obviously, they could be able to scale it up with mm -hmm. help with uh, a group like Weyerhaeuser or something like that. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. I, and I guess that the experiences that the 18 to 25 year olds have when they, if, if they come from Seattle, Washington and go to the Philippines or come from Omaha and go to the Philippines, that has to be something that's kind of life changing, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely, Stan. And ever since my experience as a Peace Corps volunteer in the Philippines, it's something that's really driven me. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely passionate about uh, international exchange, but not just international exchange. Uh, programs like Earth Corps uh, bring people together around a common cause because, as we all know, the world, uh, there's so many cultures, there's so many different mm -hmm. languages, but there's also so many people that care about the environment. And in, in my idea is if we can create more avenues for people to be coming together, to be building global community through local environmental service, that's what really drives me forward. Well then, tell me about environmental conservation in Afghanistan, and we, we only have four minutes to go, so I want to I want to get Afghanistan is something that we have to cover, and there was uh, a, quite a big project, uh, uh, fruit and forestry uh, saplings as well. Let's just go through the, the rest of them, and, and as we do, tell us about the Afghan project and Earth Corps. Well, um, you know, to be honest with you, Stan, I'm not super connected with the Afghan Conservation Corps, but I can get you kind of a larger picture yeah. view. Uh, you know, a lot of the ideas around conservation corps are that they're great opportunities, just like back in the 1930s when the, the civilian conservation corps was developed, um, to put young people to work in, in creating public value. And a lot of what the idea behind the Afghan Conservation Corps is, is to give young Afghanis an opportunity to restore their public lands, uh, to uh, build public value together. Um, just like the CCC did for the United States back in the 1930s. Wow, so that's, that's incredible uh, that something like that would happen. There's also some work with uh, Earth Corps and the Saudi Boy Scouts. I didn't even know that they had that. That's fantastic. Um, I guess what I really want to do in the, in the last three minutes that we have is just go through, if someone's watching and either they themselves or a son or grandson or, or granddaughter might want to uh, consider joining Earth Corps, how do they do that? Well, Stan, we're lucky because there's a number of opportunities right now to join Earth Corps. Uh, one I've already mentioned, 
uh, every weekend there's opportunities to come out and volunteer with Earth Corps. I guarantee you there's going to be warm coffee there and bagels. <laughs> uh, but it's a great way to take a part uh, in what Earth Corps does on a daily basis, which is restoring our public open space. There's opportunities all over Western Washington. All you need to do is go to our website, www.earthcorps.org. There's a volunteer tab on mm -hmm. there. Scroll down. Every weekend there's a volunteer event. Uh, the second opportunity is this year in particular and every year, we have cohorts of emerging environmental leaders from all over the world. Uh, Brazil, China, the Philippines, uh, Colombia, Cameroon, Nigeria, you name it. We've worked with over 76 countries at this point, Stan, but every year we have opportunities for uh, Seattle families to open up their homes and actually host our international participants. Wow, fantastic. Now, sadly, there is a sad bit about tonight. Uh, tomorrow's your last day with Earth Corps. You're moving on to uh, head up a program for the Department of State in uh, the Fulbright Scholarships in Asia. That's right, Stan. Um, so, in looking back in the minute or so that we have left, what's your favorite moment at Earth Corps? Well, I think my favorite moment was when I first found out about Earth Corps because it was such in a, in a reverse way that you would normally find out about uh, an organization like that. Actually seeing the global impact that Earth Corps has as a Peace Corps volunteer in the Philippines, I had no idea what Earth Corps was until I learned about it from my Filipino counterparts. It's amazing. The impact it, make, the impact it makes is real, and I'm glad to see Earth Corps around for 18 years, and I'm glad to see it around for 25 more. Sounds like uh, you're somebody who's saying, you know, if, if Earth Corps is even something possible in your future, then you ought to really look at it. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much for being with us. Well, what a tremendous spokesperson. Mark Howard, Senior International Program Manager for one more day for Earth Corps. And Earth Corps, um, Earth Corps guest came to us as a representative of the World Affairs Council. Go to the World Affairs Council's website and learn an awful lot more. World-Affairs.org. We'll see you next week right here on Public Exposure. Take care. Thanks, Dan. Wow. This flip.